Will Mendicant buy a show up within the campaign of Halo Infinite? How will crossplay possibly work with the campaign? And then how is Halo Infinite's ranking system going to be? We'll answer those questions and a lot more within this video, so stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. So as the Halo news drops every once in a while here and now, I make videos on them throughout the weeks and throughout the months, but obviously sometimes people are not able to catch up with everything. So I like to reach out to you guys within the community here. On my community page, I post up questions asking if you have anything you want to know more about Halo Infinite, leave a question, you'll get put into a video. So in this video, I'm going to answer some of those questions you guys left in within that community post. If you want to catch the next community post when it goes live, make sure you subscribe to the channel, guys. And if you like these kind of discussion types of videos, make sure you follow the channel as we do upload Halo content nearly daily on this channel. And don't be like that 70% of people here are not subscribed, just tap sub, it's free man, but let's get right into the content here. Gamzi Makara asks, if you go back to one of the Halo Infinite trailers and there's a scene of Master Chief looking at something before he turns to the right and off the reflection of his visor, there are three red orbs. Do you think this could be Mendicant bias? The scene in question is right here. This comes from the campaign trailer that we had for Halo Infinite. Just kind of a quick little snippet of what we're looking at here. So you can see right here on Chief's visor, there are three Red dots specifically right there. A lot of people, including myself, have been kind of assuming that this is Mendicant Bias. If you don't know who Mendicant Bias is, he's one of those major characters within the lore that was tied with the Forerunners, basically a Forerunner super AI to try to help fight the Flood, ultimately got infected by the Flood with the Logic Plague and become the Forerunners like arch enemy essentially. And Mendicant Bias is one of the most powerful AI characters ever created, so if he's in Halo Infinite, you know, things are gonna be kind of shaky. At least for the UNSC side of things, because he might be sided with the Flood. And here's an image of Mendicant Bias, obviously we've never seen him in game, but we've seen him in many of comics and external lore, you can see that has those three red dots. But something interesting about this is that the dots are upside down. As you can see on Chief's visor right here, it has one at the top, two in the bottom, compared to what we have for Mendicant Bias. It's two on the top, one on the bottom. Obviously, it just could be like an artistic interpretation, showcasing that they wanted to have it in a different orientation or some way or another, but it's just eerily familiar to Mendicant Bias. And there actually is like a bit of a hardware station kind of thing for Mendicant Bias on Zeta Halo as well, because there are ties to Mendicant Bias being on Zeta Halo. And I don't believe he is dead or been deactivated in some capacity. So certainly could be part of the campaign. I think it would be a really great kind of external lore reach to bring into the game and kind of help tie current day events with the Forerunners and help provide some external knowledge about the Forerunners as well. But is it Mendicant Bias? I don't know. I've heard it also being referenced as the Harbinger as well. We ultimately just have to wait until we play the game. Personally, I think it's Mendicant Bias, but we'll just have to wait and see. Kato or Kato Richardson asks, when they mention being able to buy the battle pass, do you think they mean buy it with real money, in-game currency, or both? Personally, I think it means both. I don't expect it to be strictly real-world money, and I don't expect it to be strictly in-game currency as well. As we got a chance to play around with the technical preview that they gave us a certain amount of credits that we could utilize as well, I'm assuming you could probably buy these credits with real-life money, probably some kind of package deal like 10,000 credits equals, I don't know, 10 bucks or something like that. I can't remember exactly how much the battle pass costs, but it seems like you kind of buy into the battle pass as we do know there's going to be two tiers. There's going to be like a premium tier and a free tier as well. So there's not going to be like the same battle pass that we have for the tech preview. I think what we saw for maybe the tech preview could possibly be the premium version. I would be very surprised if they locked armor and weapons or any kind of customization like that. I expect to see if you buy into the battle pass, you'll probably see things like challenge swaps or we also have like in-game currency, we also have some XP boosts and things like that. It's more external things that people really care about if you want to like rank up your character and change out certain things. Now I'm sure once we get closer to the release, they probably might, might not even know ex exactly how much things are going to cost until we actually get a chance to play the game. But until then, we got a chance to play with some currency and I wasn't really earning any currency during the flight either. I was at least, at least I wasn't noticing that. I reviewed some gameplay. I didn't see any kind of rewards on the UI or anything like that. Though I would expect that you would earn currency from doing activities in the game, either completing challenges, getting so far in the battle pass, things like that. 
Olira Man, if I pronounce that correctly, asks, will campaign be crossplay between Xbox One, Series X, and S, and PC? Now, the reason why this comes as a question is because obviously right now in the MCC, there is no campaign crossplay. They've talked about it, though, in blog updates for the MCC about they could do it if they wanted to, but it would require a lot of work and a lot of flighting to where the point where by the time it would be released for campaign crossplay, most likely Halo Infinite would be a release and not very many people are going to be utilizing the feature a whole lot. At least that's the impression I got as 343 is running the MCC on the old Bungie code that they used for the networking for the online co-op experience, which even back then was laggy and not very enjoyable to play. Though with Halo Infinite being crossplay from the beginning and having crossplay in mind when it comes to the experience of playing the game, I would highly expect campaign crossplay to be there. Now I did scour through the internet, I did look through some blog updates, they don't specifically mention campaign crossplay, but they do mention like fully crossplay and thus stuff like that. And there is cross progression as well, meaning you can jump between different platforms and still progress your character, at least on the multiplayer side of things. We haven't heard a direct quote saying campaign crossplay from 343, at least I couldn't find it. Though with that being said, I fully expect crossplay between Xbox and also PC to be available for campaign experiences as well. If I remember correctly, it's split, it's two player split screen co-op as well as four player online co-op. If I remember correctly from what I've read online, and with so much more replayability and so much more emphasis, I believe, on the campaign side of things that I would really expect to see crossplay be enabled for the campaign experience, as I have a feeling like events are going to be funneled through the campaign as well beyond just the multiplayer side of things. And I just generally would just be shocked if I didn't see crossplay for the campaign. JP Max4 asks, how do you think they will have and will keep alive their 10-year plan? I feel like this isn't talked enough. I hope they know what they're doing. Very true, because the whole 10-year plan, we've heard this before, especially from Destiny, and Destiny's 10-year plan has had some ups and certainly some downs as well throughout the whole process, and it's definitely changed as well. I know that they think they, I'm pretty sure that 343 has the intention to do a 10 year plan, but they don't exactly have 10 years of content already mapped out for the game, if you know what I mean. I think what they mean by that is that they're going to be sticking with Halo Infinite for the foreseeable future. And so through the release of the game, community feedback, and what players want from the game, that's going to evolve over time. It's not going to be a set plan exactly word for word, DLC for DLC, expansion by expansion of what they're going to be doing for Halo Infinite. I'm sure they have something planned. I know they at least have something planned for at least the initial year of content for Halo Infinite. Could possibly reach out for the second year, but I think it's really just kind of more like a intention for the 10 year plan, but I think they legitimately have at least a year mapped out for what they want to have happen. For Halo Infinite because Halo Infinite is taking so much influence from the community and so much feedback that I'm sure 343 is just not going to be playing things so far ahead to where they don't even know what the game is going to look like in 8 years, 10 years. But how could 343 keep the game of Halo Infinite interesting throughout the 10 year plan? Well, I think one thing is to just kind of maybe deliver more of what players want for the most part. And also I think having these major campaign beats is going to be very important as well. This is going to be the first time we're going to have like campaign expansions for a Halo game, which is such a unique kind of process when it comes to delivering content to players. Now, how often do we expect to see some new campaigns dropping in for Halo Infinite? I would expect maybe every two years to see like a full on story being played through Halo Infinite with I think maybe every other year being like a significant boost when it comes to content to play around with. And like I know with Destiny that they do these yearly big content drops around the September time frame. They kind of just boost players up and then also try and get some more story elements back into the game. Where throughout the seasons before these major beats that they have like these multiplayer experiences that kind of feed more into the experience. They have like these short cut scenes that kind of give you a little more context on why you're doing things for that season. I'm expecting something very similar as well for Halo Infinite about every like three months I believe we're going to get new seasons that we're going to have like these little you know trailers to kind of showcase like some cool new thing to like give you more context to the multiplayer experience. As 343 did state that they want your multiplayer sparring to take an actual place within the lore and storytelling of 
Halo Infinite, which that will certainly bring hype to the game as well. I think every two years, I think it would be a proper cycle to have a new, like, fully fledged, like, six to eight hour campaign be drop would be amazing. But I think ultimately for the 10 year plan, it's up to the community and what they want to see and what they want to have happen with the game. I think 343 has been kind of humbled over the last few years about actually listening to the community and not, like, having their vision of what they want Halo to be and having the community follow along. And they looked at it more as, like, a mutual bond as the community and 343 work together to create something really awesome which it seems to be the case right now for Halo Infinite. I would say also to spice things up along the 10 year plan would be having special events like one of a kind kind of events that we have happening. Um, I know I just sounds super cringy to reference but something like what Fortnite's doing with like that Ariana Grande concert right that's going on that you can actually go into Fortnite and watch obviously not an area of Grande concert within Halo Infinite, but I'm talking about these unique, like special live events that could happen maybe every once in a while or ever so often that kind of just spice up the rotation of what you can do within the game. Like maybe there's a flood event and the entire ring has been taken over by the flood and you have to go in and jump in and kill all the bad guys or something interesting, uh, something to kind of break the monotony of like, maybe it's some of the themes that we've seen so far of Halo Infinite. Spartan Man 1253 asks, what will the ranking system be like in Halo Infinite? Now this is definitely something I know a lot of people are taking into consideration when it comes to the ranking system. A lot of people want the 1 to 50 to come back because it's classic Halo. Uh, but I don't think that's probably what's going to happen. One, from what we saw recently on the Halo Waypoint update. And two, how actually 1 to 50 didn't really truly showcase overall skill within Halo. Previous matchmaking analyst Josh Menke, who used to be part of 343, talked about how the previous 1 to 50 ranking system truly didn't actually showcase true skill within the game because you had a wide skill gap between low level 50s and high level 50s. So essentially what they did with Halo 5 is that they basically just kind of opened up and detailed the rank 1 to 50 ranking system and just labeled it differently and have more tiers and better detail to explain what kind of skill level you're playing at. Many people will agree that there is a big difference between a low level 50 and a high level 50 within especially Halo 3. Personally, I don't really care if it's 1 to 50 or if it's bronze, the onyx, the champ or whatever. As long as it shows skill properly within Halo Infinite, I'm fine with it. Though we do know that True Skill 2 is coming back within Halo Infinite, so the same type of matchmaking system that they have for Halo 5. But an interesting change they're doing for Halo Infinite is showcasing MMR in game so you guys can understand what kind of players you're gonna be matching against. Patman Gaming actually sent me this tweet showcasing this exactly. We're in the lower left here, you can see a squad of 40s parted up with saying average team skill is up to 1500, 1600 MMR, which MMR stands for match making rank. MMR is kind of like your fluctuating number that will drastically change over time about what kind of players you're gonna be matching against within Halo Infinite. This goes along with your overall rank as well, which we haven't seen yet within this tech demo for Halo Infinite. But essentially think of like your overall rank is just kind of like the steady line right here and your MMR is like this wildly changing kind of graph right here. And so your overall rank is supposed to be the averaging of how drastic your MMR will switch around because within like a day of play, your MMR can drastically go up or down because depending on how well you're playing for that day. So it's actually important to have these two different types of rankings within Halo Infinite. So then you get a proper skilled match. But is it gonna be the one to 50 or is it gonna be the bronze to onyx? I have a feeling it might actually be more the bronze to onyx ranking system here, guys. Because from the Halo Waypoint update that we had back in June showcased these exact emblems or these are kind of like little trinkets and little emblems that you can earn on the website for doing specific things. Now, some of these look very familiar as in this one is definitely the champion emblem right here from Halo 5. And this is 100% the diamond tier ranking, which I certainly earned this plenty of times. So I recognize this one quite a bit from playing Halo 5. Now, the reason why I think that these are going to be the different ranks that you'll be having within the game is one is because, well, like we mentioned earlier in this video, that we have the 10 year plan for Halo Infinite. So mainly what I think of what they're going to do is try to have some synergy between the visuals and metals that you have in game to what you're going to be seeing on the website. Obviously, this could just be something completely different and something just kind of make little homages to the bronze onyx rank system, obviously. Though I do really feel that like 343 would really try to synergize the visuals and metals and things like that you would earn and accommodations that you earn within the game 
have that also on the website it'd just be really odd to see like the champion and the diamond ranks being showcased within these like medals that you can earn within halo waypoint not show up in the game as well because showcasing that you're like a champion in the game and you see a champion emblem about being on waypoint might mean like oh you got you're a really active member on waypoint or something like that so it holds a little bit more weight when you see that on the website compared to if it was just like a random emblem that didn't really mean anything it didn't have any ties to the game it would hold way less weight and would be something like a little bit of an emblem which you would utilize to kind of flex on people about well, you know, it wouldn't really hold as much weight. Obviously, we haven't seen the ranking system yet, but as soon as we get some more concrete information, I'll definitely will share it with you guys here on the channel. So if you're new to the channel or missed any content from recently, I got a playlist right here for all my Halo news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.